Hello and welcome. Today is Saturday, September the 12th, 2015. This is Paul Sandu coming to you with another episode of Wake Up and Live Radio. I have on my page a popular guest, Mr. Ren Murray, joining me from uh, Berkeley, California. Ren is a researcher par excellence, a teacher, a journalist, an independent scientist, and an all-around very, very informed person about what is going on in our world, especially about the evil forces, the elites so-called that run the world. So without further ado, let me welcome Ms. Lorraine Murray. Hello, Lorraine. Hello, Paul. Thank you very much. It's nice to have you back. We've been meaning to do a program for a while now, and the months just slip by. Uh, but a lot has been happening in uh, you know many realms, but uh, especially down in your neck of the woods, uh, there has been this uh, event that has been going on, about which we heard a lot during the spring, but now I guess, I don't know if it's finished now, or is this active, which is called Jade Helm. Uh, this, I believe, is a mili- joint military and police forces exercise, so-called, that has some nefarious... Uh, purposes uh, associated with it. So what can you tell us about Jade Moran? Well, uh, basically the, um, the internet uh, was created at the Livermore Nuclear Weapons Lab where I worked and it was originally set up for the military contractors to talk to each other um, and decentralize the military industrial complex. Um, then uh, the, the Navy, of course, was involved from the beginning, and they really control it. Now, the, the exercise, Jade Helm, started, it went operational on June the 15th, 2015, this summer. And it ended, supposedly, on August 30th. It was supposed to go for six weeks. But what we're seeing is, instead, uh, a drill that went live and it will not be reversed it will not be uh, less intense than it was during the um, the test period but what it was was a period to integrate all the systems uh, globally including Homeland Security, FEMA, uh, other countries especially the Commonwealth countries and um, what people around the world have reported to me is that um, in the activist realm, people who are change agents, uh, citizens worried about issues or with their own blogs or websites, or things like that, information sources on particular issues, um, many of these disappeared. Many websites just disappeared. and. Uh, we also noticed uh, a change in the algorithms that are used in the search engine Google so that you get less information now and um, less relevant information uh, of what you do find. Now, all of the uh, Internet is still out there. It's just that the Google search engine, the search engines that the public is using, are using, Um, have new algorithms which limit their access to the internet. Now, to to controversial information or uh, information that is opposed to the powers that be. So it's harder harder and harder to find that information. Yes, it's censorship. And um, and the uh, the change also comes along with Admiral Michael Rogers, which I've sent you an article on him and a picture of him, he truly looks demonic and obsessed. And he now is in charge of NSA and Cyber Command, which is, uh, it's been around for a while, but it, um, it, it sort of handles the internet through the military. And he has been fusing those two agencies. Now, NSA, the National um, Security Security Agency, Agency is the top security agency in the U.S. government. And they run all the satellites. Um, The information is very, very secret. Um, 
In fact, uh, one of the chiefs of the images at the NSA uh, reported spilled the beans on the plane crash that JFK Jr. was in when he and his wife died and her sister and his wife was about four, men, four months pregnant with a baby boy for them. And oh, um, yes, and so this plane uh, took off from an airport in New York City. It was a private, his private plane. He was piloting and um, George H.W. Bush was in the hangar where that plane w took off from. Uh, or where it was uh, parked uh, the day before the plane crash. And uh, when they um, investigated the plane on the seafloor, uh, it apparently had um, an explosive in it. Uh, people also reported this from the ground. And uh, so it was definitely another Kennedy assassination. Um, they have now sent Caroline Kennedy as Obama appointed her uh, ambassador to Japan, she went eagerly hip-hopping across the Pacific to, um, to become the ambassador to Japan for the United States. And they immediately sent her with her son to Fukushima and exposed them deliberately to very high levels of radiation. And so this is another Kennedy being assassinated. This is a slow assassination. Um, now, going back to um, Michael Rogers, Admiral Michael Rogers, and the Internet, uh, the changes that have been reported by people uh, using the Internet since uh, Jade Helm exercise started in mid-July 2015 is uh, not just websites disappearing but communication is much more difficult because of interference with keyboards, with transmissions, with um, being able to contact, even getting your, your contact signals indicating you want to connect with someone to work properly. So this is also global. This is not just um, the United so States. So you're, you're getting reports of this from other parts of the world too? Yes, New Zealand, Australia, a lot of the Commonwealth countries, Canada, uh, England. Uh, this is happening in uh, the Ukraine uh, with the, um, in the war zone, the, the pro-Russian uh, militia and it seems to be in, in other countries as well. So um, we're definitely going into a pinch down of um, freedom, our freedom of speech, our freedom to access information through the internet, our freedom to have social contact with people, just all really normal things. And um, I really believe it's very, very alarming, Paul. Uh, now, what, what is happening to counter this is that Russia and China have both announced that within the next few years they will be um, opening up or introducing their own internets. So uh, this will... Uh, unless, unless, of course... Uh it is sabotaged, like the, the story in Iran where the cables were cut uh, so that the traffic was stopped. So, you yes. know, I mean, I, w I wouldn't put it past. Uh, that is a major uh, challenge to the power structure is somebody setting up their own Internet uh, capabilities. And I think it will not be allowed very easily. That's my opinion. That's right. Uh, they're going to harass the heck out of China and Russia. Um, and probably already are with all these uh, massive explosions that are going on in China. This, uh, I think there's some kind of issues happened with the pipelines that were supposed to have. The Turk Stream pipeline with Russia has been, it's been put on hold. So, I mean, there seem to be events taking place, Ukraine war, et cetera, behind the scenes that are, that are at least slowing down the challenge. There's a very high level of interference 
and also the introduction of uh, nuclear weapons. These are the mini nukes now uh, that are being introduced and this is very very alarming because they have been used in Yemen, they've been used in the Ukraine to blackmail the pro-Russian militia from fighting back uh, hard against the uh, the genocide of their um, their area. It's called Novo Russia, but it's uh, an area called Donbass, and it's where the biggest industrial center, the the best coal mines, and um, it was the richest area in the Ukraine. And Ukraine um, is not a shabby third world country. It was the richest country in the Soviet Union, in that federation of countries. So uh, the Ukraine has very talented engineers, uh, scientists. It has 35% of the black soil in the world. The it's best, very rich agricultural land, yes. Very rich agricultural land, and it not only fed Russia, it was the breadbasket for Russia, uh, for, for the Europe. Soviet for the Soviet Union and before that, but also um, it uh, feeds Europe. Right. So what has happened is there are all these land grabs and genocides and forced relocation of populations going all over the world. We are depopulating, we're being depopulated very rapidly with the, um, the radiation from uh, Fukushima combined with the chemtrails that are being sprayed globally except for the African continent and the, um, the population uh, density is so low there that uh, chemtrailing is not effective for the cost, it's not cost effective. So the Bill and Melinda Gates uh, with money from Warren Buffett in their foundation has been used to um, do a vaccination program all over Africa that serves to replace the, uh, the genocidal effects of chemtrails. Now, right. going back to, uh, to these uh, nuclear weapons, um, the Tianjin explosions, I have seen those from satellites in space and also uh, there were dash cams, and, and many civilians uh, ate, were able to, yes. to film it. And those explosions were not one, but probably four uh, mini nuclear weapons because they were recorded um, in the seismic record. And um, that takes a lot of energy to, <laughs> to get an explosion in the seismic record. Um, and there was a double pulse uh, during the, um, the beginning of the, um, those explosions indicating that it was a nuclear event and it appeared to me to be neutron explosions. Now, what people don't know is two or three months before the Tianjin explosions in August of 2014, 2015, there was another similar one in a warehouse in a uh, shipping container and it was very, very similar. Um, it was American. It was the U.S. behind that. That was the test run or the demonstration. And then they did it in Tianjin and it's when the, uh, the U.S. took some economic measures uh, no, China took some economic measures that right. the, the U.S. did not like. So, um, who owned that warehouse and the contents of those shipping containers that blew up in Tianjin, not once, but four times, with over 800 tons of potassium cyanide, which is used to extract gold from gold ore. Well, that uh, warehouse was owned by a Chinese company, but that was the rebranding of an American company based in North Carolina, made up of retired Army personnel. So 
This is a new form of nuclear war, just as Fukushima is a new form of nuclear war with nuclear power plants. And these are civilian facilities, civilians involved, um, on the ground, uh, huge releases of nuclear materials, a lot of times combined with chemicals as well. And um, uh, this is a new, uh, a new addition to the, the nuclear warfare. These mini nukes were also used, as I mentioned, in the Ukraine. I saw explosions in Yemen. They were probably used in Libya. And we're going to see a lot more of them. Yes, as if there's not enough uh, nuclear radiation contamination in our world already. Huh? Um, it's, <laughs> it's, Paul, it's beyond horrendous. I cannot believe this is happening. I mean, it took me a long time to get over the denial, 10 years, that all this nuclear pollution was not an accident. One day I finally said, no, this cannot be an accident. And so I sat down at my computer and I Googled University of California because they manage the nuclear weapons labs in the U.S., the two top ones, Livermore and Los Alamos, plus Skull and Bones. And Skull and Bones goes back to Yale University and right. the, um, the German secret uh, club, Skull and Bones, Skull and Bones, and... Uh, the sort of the very, very dark, dark, dark energy that is behind this global uh, genocide and the destruction of all living things. And also, uh, they are spraying and killing wildlife all over the world. Africa's losing uh, the elephants, the rhinoceroses. They're being slaughtered and uh, blamed on hunters or rebels or this or that it's a uh, very systematic it's from the top oh, dentist, dentist from minnesota <laughs> yeah and and also uh there's an american colonel who is retired in new zealand and he was in charge of the spraying program in tasmania they're spraying all of the outback and killing the animals so people will not be able to live off of the land and wildlife catch their own meat um, and now he's in New Zealand doing the same thing and um, of course it just kills everything there I can't believe what they're doing and guess what he owns a cattle company and he's one of the big cattle producers all these people are usually American retired military who are given companies that they can make money from, and then they are willing to carry out these horrific policies. For sure, for sure. So, um, it's looking pretty ugly. So now this, uh, going back to just before we finish up with the Jade Helm, so you think that was an exercise in uh, urban warfare, warfare. slash ur urban control? Absolutely. It's just so what is that? What is that foreboding then? Uh, what does that? Uh, what is that a warning off? Well, what do you uh, foresee coming that they are doing these exercises on this massive a scale? Well, what I'm looking at is um, uh, the Occupy movement in the United States, which is one of George Soros's color revolutions, and uh, surprisingly, the University of California. Uh, UC Berkeley and uh, UC Davis are involved in these military programs. In fact, they're up to their eyeballs. Well, now, you say surprisingly, universities have always been involved with the military all, all over, right? Yes. And most most of these uh, weapons research, biological warfare, you know, bio warfare research, yes. even the inter chemical okay, electronic harassment, all these these are done at universities all over the country. It all comes out of the universities, you're totally right. The universities were started by bankers, and they are very occult. In, right. other, in other words, satanic and demonic. And they're involved in pedophile rings, they're involved in um, drugs. Like they're, that guy Jerry, what was his, uh, Sandusky. 
Sandusky, uh, right. yes, yes, right. Yes, all that is, that's yes. more commonplace than people understand that it's going on all over the place. Yes, and, and uh, at the University of Pennsylvania, Penn State, where that huge pedophile ring was discovered a few years ago, um, what was the name of the coach? Italian name. Paterno, Paterno. Yes, yes, Joe Paterno. Joe, Joe Paterno, yeah. He had been the football coach for 45 years. Now, he said he didn't know anything about those yeah, right. pedophile rings. <laughs> yeah, sure. But he was on the board of directors for the foundation that provided right. and um, and procured these um, these young boys. And um, so he played dumb, and the uh, board of regents finally voted to fire him. And uh, the the head of the Board of Regents of Penn State called him at midnight and fired him. The very next morning, the first phone call that Joe Paterno made was to George H. W. Bush's criminal okay. attorney. Right. Okay. So Joe Paterno was involved with George H. W. Bush's global pedophile rings and they use them to blackmail politicians and wealthy people and reward them and so forth and so on. Pedophilia uh, goes all the way back to the Kabbalah, the Talmud, Mesopotamia, where uh, these were satanic um, magic cults and um, they have been carried forward through these ancient Iranian bloodlines that are still controlling the world, believe yeah, it or elites not. elites have always been pedophiles. That yes. history has a good record of that, so yes. it's not surprising that the royals, and you hear all these, and they're in the media one day, and then they just quietly disappear, but uh, the record is, speaks for itself. That's right. So, um, I forgot what we were ta talking about. <laughs> Well, originally we were talking about, uh, you know, the implications of Jade Helm. Like, yes. What I, what I think is that possibly they're setting up a scenario where there will be uh, economic collapse or there will be some sort of quote-unquote natural disasters or maybe combination of all the above. And uh, then they'll roll out uh, all these guys that have been trained to do urban warfare. Yes, and, um, and uh, this is really surprising. Um, I have Russian contacts who give me information. And a year and a half ago, one and a half to two years ago, uh, Obama made a phone call, personal phone call, to uh, President Putin of Russia and said, we want, uh, we want you to send over 5,000 of your Spetsnaz. The Spetsnaz are the black ops in the Russian right. military. And um, so Putin sent them over. Uh, when I was at the Lawrence Livermore lab uh, between 1989 and 1991, my lab partner came in one day and he said, there are two KGB generals here. And I said, we're in the middle of the Cold War and that's the enemy, what are they doing here? And he said, they're transferring the technologies of political control to the United States government. And when they leave here, they're going to the Defense Information Agency, DIA, and they're setting up the real ID cards, which Oracle is uh, designing and making, uh, to put the U.S. under the same uh, ID card system that the Soviet Union was controlled by, and or controlled through. And uh, what is uh, really interesting is that there are two KGB generals now at Homeland Security running it. So um, uh, Putin is very much involved with the takedown of the United States and he's in partnership with uh, certain agents in the government who are destroying this country, genociding our population, uh, stealing the wealth, uh, uh, the the world leaders are all on the same on the same side. Right, right, right. They're yes. looking for the same uh, entity, whatever. Yes. Whether you call it Satan or they're on the same. It, it, uh, right, right. Same they're agenda. Same agenda. It's global world domination by these ancient Iranian bloodlines. Um, Stalin was uh, Iranian. He was from the south. 
um, west corner of the Caspian, and that is an area where the Med, the Med tribes, Med, Med, uh, Medici uh, family of Italy, uh, Italy's all Iranians. Um, so these, these are the Medes of the Bible? The, the, Medes, of the Medes of the Bible, yes. exactly, and they were particularly right. cruel, and Stalin was very cruel. Um, Ataturk's mother came from that area. Um, um, their other leaders, uh, the these people, the Farnese's, uh, Fidel Castro is a an Italian duke, the Duke of Castro, his family, and uh, they are also ancient Iranian bloodlines, and um, his family, the Farnese family, built the Villa Farnese. Pope Paul III was Ale Alessandro Farnese. Uh, Fidel Castro's middle name is Alejandro and uh, for the Farnese name and uh, Pope Paul III built uh, the uh, Villa Farnese with a five-sided structure, military structure um, on the, the bottom, the ground floor and then his uh, grandson built the villa which was the headquarters for full of war rooms for the Jesuits uh, Pope Paul III also started the Jesuits, right. and um, so the Pentagon is built on the uh, the plans of the Villa Farnese. It's uh, owned by the Farnese family. In other words, all that street theater by Castro going to the UN and bringing his own chickens because he might be poisoned was all street theater. Um, right, right, right. His family owns uh, federal yeah. Washington, D.C., including sure. the Pentagon and everyone in it. So these old, old families, uh, the Shah uh, Reza Pahlavi uh, is one of these, old, from a, one of these old bloodline families. Um, and all those overthrows of the Ottoman Empire, the um, uh, other empires in the Mediterranean region, in the 20s and, and earlier, Iran, also Persia, uh, right. were, were overthrows uh, by these ancient Iranian bloodlines. And they've moved into um, many public offices and so forth around the world, but nobody knows who they are. Even right. the, I mean, even the Saudi ancient. Arabians are Iranians. They're ancient bloodline Iranians. Right, right, right. I mean, it probably goes even further back than Iran down to Babylon and uh, down to the time of Nimrod, you know, way, way back then. So, oh, way back, I way mean, back. Right, so yes, it's these uh, uh, people are the same descendants of the people from way back then are still well, they were their de the show. We're their descendants too. They're the Indo-Europeans or the Aryans. Right. And they also populated India, especially right. Uttar Pradesh. Yeah, northern India, yes, yes, certainly. All right, so while we are talking about uh, the Middle East and uh, you know such, let's talk about uh, what's going on with this Syrian refugee crisis a little bit. Uh, all of a sudden, it's burst into the news. It's everywhere. Everybody's talking about, you know, what shall we do about the poor Syrians? Uh, what's, uh, and you know, to me, like, I just wanted a mile away that this is all propaganda and this uh, real story is something quite different. So what what, uh, what do you know about it and what can you tell us is actually going on? You're right, the real story is quite different. But this is also related to Jade Helm. And um, it's another step in the global consolidation of people, the uh, destruction of sovereignty of nations. There aren't going to be any sovereign nations in the future. It will be well, one. You know, like for all intents and purposes, I will say, Lauren, sorry to interrupt you, that that has already been accomplished. The world is run by corporate power. Yes. Okay. Yes. It already is. Yes. All the leaders of the world, they bow down to the corporate uh, behemoth now, whether it's Walmart in India yes. or Exxon or, you know, Shell. All these corporations, they are already in control, and they control the government. So, you know, for all intents and purposes, the bankers already have their their one world government but they just have to bring it out into the open i think that's the, yes. that's the next logical step Would that's that be what to... that's what they're doing and monsanto uh archer uh, archer 
Daniels or um, Midland. 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 Yes. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, Monsanto Cargo. and Cargo. and Cargill. Those are all owned by the Jesuits. And the at big the, agro, agro businesses. Yes, and they're the ones who want the Ukraine and all of that black soil. Right. And they're willing to genocide every single living thing in that country to get it. And they will get it. Um, so um, this is happening. It's increasing very, very rapidly, accelerating so fast that uh, humans aren't really, people aren't really able to... Um, to think it through and devise ways to counter it. It's just a steamroller going across the world, uh, harvesting people, grinding them up into a uh, hamburger and throwing them out of the exhaust pipe. And the uh, forced relocation has been done all through history. It's in the Bible. There's nothing new that's happening. This is all in the Bible, and it's from... Uh, practices that were even pre-Christianity and pre-Biblical. Yeah, the Old Testament, the Assyrians, they, they, uh, when they settled some area, they took all the Israelis away to eastern parts and they brought people in from there. So relocation, you know, settling with different cultures, all that, like was happening in Europe now with the Syrians and the Middle Easterners being brought in. That's right. And uh, upsetting that culture and, uh, you know, introducing something new. Like you said, it's nothing new. It's been going on for thousands of years. And uh, what has been happening in recent time, if you look at U.S. foreign policy, um, and uh, their their partnership with European countries, part it's partly NATO, but not completely. Um, they have been attacking and destroying sovereign nations in Africa, Libya, uh, Yemen, um, Iraq, Afghanistan, that well Central Asian countries too, and they've been destabilizing these regions and. Um, and attacking the civilians especially. War is always a cover for genocide and land grabs. And they uh, displace, they forcibly displace people, populations in regions they want the resources or the land or whatever for. And, um, and they force them to relocate to other, other areas. They lose all their wealth, they lose their property, they lose their families, they lose everything. And, um, and that's a restart button for the bankers and these parasites on humanity, which have been doing this harvesting humanity over and over and again, periodically. In fact, uh, they, they harvest the, the accumulated wealth of every generation because labor is the only real currency. And they've developed this banking system where people trade their labor for paper money, which is currency, in order to procure other goods or, or trade or needs or whatever, commodities, they can buy commodities. Um, but it's through wars, famines, uh, natural disasters, plagues. Uh, these are all ways to um, destabilize a nation or a people, a population, so that you can steal all their wealth in each generation. I put um, five generations of my family on a piece of butcher paper up on the wall to show my daughter what choices her ancestors have made and what the consequences were so that she could make better ones. And I realized every generation had been part of some big historic thing like World War I, World War II. And that's how I finally understood that's how they harvest the, the labor of every generation. And if you do this for 5,000 years, Paul, that's a lot of money. And that's why 85% of the world owns nothing. True, true, true. It does not. It does not. And this, uh, uh, you know, in Soviet Russia and in China, this relocation was perfected. Uh, it was made into an art form where Stalin moved like literally yes. millions of people from one part yes. of the country to another. And uh, so I guess it's the same modus operandi that's, uh, yes. that's that is being employed again and again and again. So what's the Even what's happening it, with these Syrian guys now? Why are well, they all streaming into Europe now? What's happening what, what's, is it's not just Syrians. What they've been doing... Are they, are they really Syrian refugees to begin with? 
let's, ah. let's deal with that question, or is there some... They're Syrian, other... they're Iraqi, and there are other, other uh, people too, they're Libyans. But what has happened is that Turkey has been... How are they getting to Europe anyways? Like, you know, well, like, are they going in ships or like... You know, this? Just a minute, just a minute. We need to go back to where they really came from. They right. left those countries long ago. It was during the, the time of the wars. And they were funneled into Turkey and put in uh, refugee camps. Yeah, so this is for many years. And, yeah. um, and, and it's all part of a pre-planned uh, flooding of Europe and uh, the Western uh, economic countries, the countries of the Western economy. So that they're flooding these people into these countries, European countries, America, Canada, uh, Australia, New Zealand. They're all being forced to take these refugees. Oh yeah, for sure. Most of them are Muslims. And so what they're doing is, and they have no intention of assimilating, in other words, changing to Christianity and becoming part of their new country. Right. And so what they're doing is setting up the Hegelian dialectic again, where you have uh, Christians and Muslims in the same country, and there's going to be a lot of strife, and it's going to be a theater of tension, and mm -hmm. um, there will be guerrilla warfare, all kinds of things are going to happen. But uh, most of them, a lot of them, want to go to rich countries like Germany or Australia or America or Canada where they can get on welfare. They have no intention of working and contributing to, uh, to the, the country they're moving to. They want uh, free benefits and they are being protected by European country warships, bringing them into uh -huh. Europe against the wishes and, and uh, with very strong opposition by the citizens of Europe. They don't want right. them there. And the most vocal one has been the president of Hungary, and he just said, uh, we don't want you here. He put, he put razor wire all around the borders of Hungary. They just crawl through it or crawl under it. And um, then uh, he had them rounded up at bus stations and train stations, and he wouldn't let them out unless they got on the trains or buses and left the country. And so, um, uh, Angela Merkel, what a horrible, horrible agenda she's had. Uh, she's responsible for much of the genocide in, in the Ukraine and the economic collapse of that country. Well, she's behind bringing these, um, they're not refugees, they call them migrants, I know that, that terminology that you know they've started using that since Libya, where yes. they suddenly became migrants. You know, and I'm wondering, like, hmm, migrants it's is a their, different connotation than a refugee. Yes, they're right? they're they're forced to leave their country. They're forced. A uh, migrant is generally means some kind of voluntary person. Yes, migration, but this, this is, is not, not voluntary. voluntary. They would much right. rather stay in their homes in the, on their land and so and. they uh, really are not migrants. They no. are they're, forced, they're refugees. They are yes. you know. Right. Forced uh, relocation. There's even a big United Nations program for forced relocation. It's official. It's part of, of the agenda. And um, so, is it being done to destroy like the structure or the fiber of Europe, basically, yes. the fabric of Europe? Yes. It's to uh, introduce an irritant to introduce the theater of tension to introduce the huge cost of supporting these right. uh, refugees uh, by uh, taxing and everything. And Angela Merkel took over the biggest airport in Europe. It was Hitler's airport in World War II, and it was sitting there empty. It's huge. And um, she's bringing hundreds of thousands of, of refugees That's into Germany, and then she's going around and forcing countries, other European countries, and the U.S. and Canada to also take these refugees. 
So we are prime minister and all our opposition guys because we have an election. They're all gung ho of how many Syrians they're gonna take in. And yes. Blah blah blah. Our heart bleeds for all the Syrians, and they're going, yeah, right, okay, sure. And but they're um, the one that have been out running bombing sorties and you know destroying the infrastructure of Syria. But now let's help these poor guys. Well, then they're doing a lot of uh, photo ops and and news stories that are positive about the the refugees. They do almost nothing negative. They had a story this week of uh, two little twin toddlers that washed up on the shore Mediterranean right. when the um, the boat sank that was uh, transporting the, the refugees. Well, there was uh, a young man who was, um, his last name was Kurdi, K-U-R-D-I, and he supposedly was the father of the toddlers. Uh, so he was... Um, doing all these uh, photo ops and interviews and and sobbing about his family, losing his family and everything. Well, yesterday it came out in the news, another woman who had paid $10,000 to that same man to transport her and her family to Europe, the shores of Europe. She was Iraqi. She said, we sold everything we had gave him ten thousand dollars that father is not the father he <laughs> he is the cheat the head of the boat he's a human trafficker <laughs> it, it, the whole thing is so convoluted and so uh, you know people fall for these stories too easily they're just so brainwashed you know well the so. media is very powerful and it's overwhelming and they own all the news sources except the alternative ones now, while I, heard this, that, I heard that a lot of these guys are actually trained uh, ISIS, whatever this ISIS they are. is. So they, they are. They yeah. are. And then uh, there was a truck with 71 dead bodies. It was families, right. children, babies, everything, that was discovered parked on the side of the road just of the border from Hungary in Austria. Austria, right. It turned out to be Bulgarian um, uh, human traffickers who were smuggling these families into Europe and they were headed for Germany and for right. some reason the people uh, were locked in this truck and they uh, they ran out of oxygen and and smothered and uh, the, uh, the 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 drivers just took it took it over the border into Austria and um, and uh, left it there and on top of that um, on top of that, um, all kinds of other things have happened right. indicating that there are all these smuggling activities and organizations, organized crime doing this. See, I can understand like a million Syrians like moving over, or Iraqis going over the, over the border into Turkey. That, that stands to reason. But for them to end up in like Germany and uh, Hungary and all those places, that is not so simple like for a million people to just, and Germany planning on taking a million of these uh, ref, so-called refugees, uh, there has to be an agenda here and it has to be a nefarious one. Well, these well, people, who's, they're, they're, I'm sure there are some that are genuinely displaced people, but a lot of them, I'm, I, I doubt, uh, you know, I would check their credentials very carefully. Um. The well, they seem a lot of them seem to have enough money to pay the smugglers to get them in, but right. um, but if if these were held in uh, refugee camps in Turkey for many years, um, and there were over a million of them, uh, how was Turkey involved, and how was this whole agenda set up, and who did it? Well, I can bet that the United Nations was involved. Oh, for sure. For and sure. Uh, the um, the famous oh well another thing that happened during this uh, nightmare of this this onslaught of waves five thousand people a day were coming into Greece alone, uh, so the Greeks put them on an island and would wouldn't let them in the country, uh, but at this time Turkey went into Syria and dismantled all of the factories and the industrial uh, center of Syria, the, the city with, that was this, the, the industrial center and relocated all that industrial equipment and the factories to Turkey. Turkey. So they just stole 
the whole industrial center of Syria while these waves of people were leaving Turkish prison, um, not prison camps, but refugee camps. And the, uh, the news was flooded with uh, all these people dying and drowning and ships sinking. I mean, and, this crisis has been so-called crisis has been yes. going on for three, four years now. So yes. suddenly, like, why, why not? Why didn't we hear about this before? Yes. Uh, a- anyhow, like, it's... it's uh, but also, the, uh, ISIS and um, all the other rebrandings of ISIS and Q- Al-Qaeda predated it. Right, right. Uh, there's two topics here that I wanted to discuss was if you know about them, the ISIS issue, of course, but also Russia's involvement in Syria, because that's been in the news lately, well, although yes. the Russians have been there, you know, for much longer than the last month or two, whatever, but yes. uh, they seem to be building up their forces there, so what's that all about, if you have well, some information on that? I do, and that's all uh, connected to Russia as well, and Russia's interests there. Um, the um, the attacks in Syria by ISIS, and then um, now ISIS has been rebranded a couple of times, but uh, we know from Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan and ISIS uh, recently that they are Anglo-American uh, war crimes racketeering syndicate operations. And um, not maybe a year ago, uh, Iceland um, is is hosting servers for uh, people all over the world, organizations and so forth. And about a year ago, they discovered that one of the websites they were hosting was an ISIS website. So they shut it down and they investigated uh, who owned it, where they were located and so forth. And it was... Uh, the owner was in an affluent neighborhood in Auckland, oh, <laughs> in Auckland, New Zealand. Okay. So there's. I, 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 I thought it might be in Virginia or somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Close to Langley. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, so there's uh, one of the one example of of these British Anglo-American ties, and um, so ISIS is not just in Syria. Uh, Russia actually is facing the most dangerous um, assault or the most dangerous attack or threat is actually in Central Asia on their border with Tajikistan and Uzbekistan. They have a lot of U.S. bases there in the U.S. Yes, they do. And right, yeah, okay. But it's not the U.S. bases. It's ISIS that is invading nah. those countries just as they invaded Syria, and it's very, very dangerous for Russia. That is the greatest threat they're facing right now. Right, okay. And so, oh... I haven't uh, heard anything about it. See, that's not in the news at all. I know. It's, uh, it's in the Russian news, though. In fact, okay. it was one of Russia's top intelligence people who is retired, but he's still working at a foundation, and he's the one who talked about uh, the state of affairs for Russia. I'll send that interview to you. And he said it's that region that is of the greatest danger. Now, what is interesting is that these Iranian bloodlines at the top of global control, and they've had global control for thousands of years, they are Uzbeks and Tajiks, and the Uzbeks would be the families like Farnese, Aldo Brandini, um, uh, Pallavicini. Uh, these are the old, old families uh, in Italy, and these Uzbeks and Tajiks started Italy. They started the Etruscan civilization, and then they... So these are the guys that became the Romans, then? Yes, they are the Romans. The Romans were Persians, Iranians. Yeah. And, um, and so isn't it interesting that the uh, most effective attack or the most dangerous attack is through their homeland? Right. Uh, and also Tajikistan, um, Uzbekistan, China, and part of Mongolia, that's all part of the Tian Shan Gold Belt. And so that uh, 800 tons of potassium uh, cyanide that blew up in, in Tianjin just a few weeks ago was intended 
for the Tian Shan gold belt where China is extracting gold. And um, there's even more. Uh, Ta Tajikistan and Uzbekistan has they have even more gold in the um, in the ore belt. So uh, this yeah, is Mongolia over is supposed to be very very mineral rich. What what is? So Mongolia is supposed to be very oh, yes. rich in minerals yes. and in um, precious metals and yes. such. Yes, all uh, Tibet is also. And um, the the U.S. corporation Bechtel has already mapped ore bodies all over the world from space with a 60-watt signal. That's about the strength of a um, sewing machine light bulb. And No, I'm sorry, 30-watt. And they uh, are able to um, send uh, uh, wavelengths from satellites that penetrate the ore body, and they can right. not only detect the um, the metalliferous ore or whatever they're looking for, oil or gas. It's a hundred percent accurate. They can map 3D the entire ore body and estimate the um, the, the profit on it. And uh, this is all done from satellites now. They don't need people like us, the geologists. The people on the ground anymore. No, no, it's all done. And what happens is the signal goes down the signal is affected and changed, the, the wavelength, by the material it's passing through. And when it comes back to the satellite, it's like playing keys on a piano. This is copper, this is zinc, this is, right. this is uh, gold, blah, blah, blah. 100%. So then, uh, then they, they have created this ISIS to go and destabilize the yes. regions and countries in Syria. I've yes. heard it's something to do with the pipelines as well. The pipeline that's supposed to come from Iran to go into the Mediterranean to ship yes. nat natural gas down into Europe. And uh, they want to put a stop to that. So that's why Syria is being destabilized. And now you're talking about Tajikistan and Uzbekistan and Afghanistan and places like that. that are rich in minerals and, and poppy. And uh, yeah. they want to take control. They want to take control of those places. Yes, they do. And it's not Syria is not just about pipelines. Syria is a pivot country in the Middle East, and um, Putin has long, long, long been involved. Russia's been involved for a long time in Syria. Um, the previous, the father of the present President Assad, was a much better ruler. Uh, he was a, a strong man. The son is weaker, and um, he's managed to hold on. I don't know how. I, I believe he has a British wife, but um, he's from. And the Russians are, must have been helping him, otherwise he'd be he'd be gone the way of Gaddafi. They they have definitely been helping him, and um, that's really too bad that they did that to Gaddafi because um, he made a paradise. For his people, they had a higher uh, income. They were ha homeowners. They got a car and a, and a house when they got married. Um, if they wanted to farm, they were given all the, the tractors and right. the land and everything. He had a huge... Yeah, he did a lot for his people, as did Saddam Hussein. He did. He funded almost all of the guerrilla uh, anti-colonial movements in Africa. They came and fought for him when when the Europeans started attacking uh, Libya, and um, he also funded the black movement in the United States. Right, 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 right. So, and he also spoke out about how badly minorities were treated in the U.S. He was a very honest person. No, he did a lot. Libya was yes. just like a Bedouin country, and he made yes. it into really a first-class place, and this yes, too bad what's happened down there. Yes, he did. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying he was a nice guy. I don't know. Maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. I'm not sure, because all we hear is propaganda, but I do know that, you know, he built those beautiful, uh, he brought water into the desert. He made, he, he did, like, some very good well, things for, for Libya and for Africa. He did a whole development of agriculture, a right. project, huge project. He brought all the water there, and he was planning to feed the Middle East. Right. And that's not what Monsanto and the Jesuits no. want. They want to feed the whole world GMO right. and kill them faster. Yeah. So this Assad, then, uh, you're saying that so this not just to do with the 
with the pipelines, it also has some strategic importance, Syria. Yes, it does, and also it's um, it's uh, also um, uh, keeping an eye on ISIS and what they're doing, and 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 trying to contain it so that it doesn't spread even more to Russia and other countries around Russia on Russia's doorstep. Right. Okay. All right. Now we've been uh, discussing some kind of electronics uh, here. You know, you've been talking about yes. these uh, signals that can be sent from space. You can map, uh, you know, top uh, that have some geological purposes and all that, which I'm totally, uh, you know, I, I can believe that 100% that that the technology exists and that's what they use. Uh, electronics, uh, we, but, you know, something which also is related to Jade Helm and that you've spoken about in some of your other programs has been this... Uh, subject of electronic harassment which i think mm -hmm. i would like to rephrase as electronic terrorism uh, that also is something that you have researched and you've spoken about in the past uh, but most people are not familiar with it uh, what role does electronics play in controlling populations everything um uh, radio frequency is being weaponized into directed energy weapons to be used on civilians and all living things. And would, you, would, you, would, you, would you agree that we are basically electrical or our nature, like our bodies, they function electrically, like our brain signals are electrical signals. So, so controlling somebody with the electronics by sending some sort of you know electronic signal into a brain would be the equivalent of sending a signal into your computer and making it do something that you wanted to do. Would that be a, a, a good analogy? Well, life has evolved in on Earth um, under the uh, the conditions of the Earth's magnetic field. So mm -hmm. those are waves. Now, right. Einstein's formula, E equals mc squared, energy equals mass times a constant squared, which is the speed of light, right. photons. Um, that basically is the, it's the energy regime uh, for the whole universe. And what it means is that everything in the universe is either in waveforms, light, uh, radio, whatever, or it's matter. And it's this interplay of those two forms of energy that make life possible. Now, our bodies are simply photons. We're just a pile of photons. And it is wavelengths, it's energy, it's um, uh, frequencies uh, that control and synchronize our uh, biological system and make life possible. And so the way that messages or, yes, messages travel through our body, it's not chemical reactions. Right. They're, they're too slow. It's infrared. And that's mm -hmm. why they have a whole uh, satellite system. It's called... Um, SARS. It's called SARS, but there's another... Um, it's the... I'll, I'll think of it in a minute. Um, anyway, that ur iridium... It's the iridium, iridium, yeah. the iridium, iridium. That, that's right. right. That was back in the 90s or something. That, the, the government, fiasco. yes, the right. government made a fortune, made a, uh, put a fortune into it, developing it. Then they said, oh, we can't use it. They gave it to Bill Gates and Microsoft. Well, guess what it's really for? It's really for attacking people from space with infrared. And infrared is... The, um, the message flow through our bodies, telling right, right, right. organs when to do what, telling cells when to do what, whatever. So our bodies are completely controlled, managed, uh, everything through frequencies. And all they have to do is do research on the natural frequencies in all parts of the body and, uh, and then mimic that. And that's what they're doing. And algorithms, uh, which were developed, um, it's a mathematical language that they use in factories on assembly lines, for instance, to give commands to the machinery right. on 
uh, manufacturing, making things instead of having people do it. And um, so at Davis in the 60s when I was a student there, there was a monkey colony hidden out in a peach orchard. And the students who worked there would come back and they'd say the monkeys all have the top of their heads cut off, their wires coming out of their brains, and some of them they'll give commands to and all they do is climb up and down uh, inside their cage all day long. Now, a very famous Spaniard who came to the United States, joined the U.S. Army, his name is Aquino, he got real involved, I'm sure he was sent by the Jesuits to come and do this in the U.S., but he was very involved in the biological, the biology of aggression, of, uh, of, of um, doing, uh, learning how to control animals and then use it to uh, apply it to humans. And he did this very famous demonstration on television. He went into a bull ring and he had a little um, controller in his hand and the there was a wire that was put into the bull's brain that uh, he could transmit to and this bull came charging at him with right. these huge horns and he just went beep with one button and the bull stopped and turned around and walked away. Became a pussycat, yeah. It t turned him into right, a pussycat. Right. Now they have these microwave systems in the sports stadiums now where they have huge um, collections of people watching football or whatever and um, they can turn these on when the crowd starts rioting and people just are turned into that bull, bull and they just they just slowly walk out of the, the, the they just stop rioting and they slowly walk out and go to their cars and get in and drive away. It's in is the sports that, is, stadium. Is this, is this technology in your research, uh, would you say that this is in the process of being developed or has it already been oh, no, refined? No. This is way, 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 way in advance and what we've been doing here in Berkeley uh, for the last uh, few years is observing all of this being, uh, all these pieces being integrated and put together. and. Um, the uh, chancellor of the University of California at Davis campus holds 19 patents on these frequencies, antennas, and the integration of all these systems. She is now the chancellor of the University of California at Davis. Uh, she said, I'm Greek. Uh, she is the one who had the Occupy movement um, on the Davis campus. All these students were sitting there completely quiet. No one said a word. They were, they were uh, demonstrating um, part of the Occupy movement, which a color is, it's a co color revolution. Um, and she uh, came out at like midnight or two in the morning from the administration building where she'd been meeting with other administrators and she walks silently like this sinister um, um, uh, ghost or something through the crowd and she was looking at the students. She went back in the building without saying a word and she ordered the police to pepper spray all those students. Now, she, uh, she has the patents to 19, uh, I mean, she, is, she holds 19 patents uh, on these technologies that are now being rolled out. And what I'm seeing is that the Lawrence Berkeley Lab has a smart meter research program going on in the civilian sector of, day, of Berkeley. And the universities are actively training students, and they have been for decades, to go into workplaces, they're trained in hacking, uh, they're trained in um, mind control, they're trained in all kinds of uh, disruptive activities that create chaos, they're trained in spying, um, and of course they're part of the University of California system the rest of their lives because everyone is tracked by UC once you um, work for them or you're a student here. and. What we're seeing is that all of a sudden, two years ago, 
uh, smart meters were slapped on people's houses without their permission. It was done covertly. It was a military operation. And it's happening across the United States, but I think it's the most intense in California. And this happened when Janet Napolitano, who was Secretary of Homeland Security, was hired by the University of California without any search for any other person to hire. And um, she has now been the president of the University of California uh, for uh, almost two years. In October, it'll be two years. She brought Homeland Security and FEMA with her. They're doing the whole rollout for the United States here first in the San Francisco Bay Area and in California. And what I've seen the students do, first they got the iPhones, these 5G phones. Right. And they have flat array antennas in them that the Navy developed. They're very, very powerful, and each iteration of cell phone, they're miniaturized more, but they're also made more powerful. So in the, um, the G5 and the G6 now, there are nine or ten of these tiny antennas inside that phone, and it's actually a, an array of antennas that give you a more powerful signal and other more options and oh by the way sorry just to interrupt here there's there's a recent uh, movie called uh, the king's man or something i believe okay and the premise of that movie was that this uh, megalomania billionaire he gave away free cell phones yes and okay so what he was going to do was he was going to send out the signal that was going to turn these people into all into stark raving lunatics and they were going to go and uh, yes. kill each other and it would be chaos everywhere so uh, you know these stories that come out of hollywood they do have some basis in reality and they're not just fiction and so that's exactly i suppose uh, somebody somewhere has a button that can be pressed and suddenly out of five million iphones which I happen to have one, is, uh, you know, it, it'll drive people cuckoo. We're going to be that's, like the zombie apocalypse on our hand. That's exactly what they did in Rwanda. The organized crime... Okay, hold on one second. Hold on, hold on. Hold, hold that thought for just a minute. I'll be right back. So let's talk about Rwanda. Actually, I, yes. You sent me the link and I read that story and it was very, very interesting. Now, in Rwanda, apparently, like, when uh, the story goes that... Uh, one tribe rose up against the other and they slaughtered a million of each other. The Hutus One. and the Tutus. Tutsis. Right. Tutsis. And the Tutsis and the Hutus or whatever. You yes. know, and, uh, but but uh, there was another version of this story that they had these uh, special forces that went around with these electronic sound cannons or whatever and they drove, uh, they were, the frequencies were targeted towards these people that made one group very aggressive and one group very passive. Right. Is that the story you're referring to? Yes, the, what actually happened was that uh, Russian mafia decided to loot the wealth of all of the colonials in Rwanda and have all of them murdered. So they used um, organized crime, Russian mafia, in the Ukraine and this young man, his mother was a, a masseuse or something at a spa, and her boyfriend was one of these organized criminals working for an oligarch. And um, he was sent, uh, this uh, organized criminal uh, uh, procured this young man when he was 13 or 14. He uh, mentored him, he trained him with um, headsets on and, and programmed his brain w in front of a computer and he sent him as the head of a team when he was 24 years old down to Rwanda and he was instructed to loot and kill every single colonial and all of their families in Rwanda. We're and talking about white people here, not, these this is are, not just black tribal people. These are white people. The black uh, the Black War was uh, a, an antenna event controlled through antennas 
and it was to cover up the slaughter of the white people. Right. right. So when this young man arrived with his team, there were antennas all over the place. They were, they'd never been there before. They were there uh, just for this event with the right frequencies and in the right positions and everything. And um, he described the slaughter and he said they turned those antennas on and in two days every white person was dead. There were mothers in their kitchen, white mothers, killing their own babies and children. They were killing their husbands. There were neighbors killing other neighbors. Um, and then, of course, these uh, teams, his wasn't the only team, they were there killing and slaughtering as well. And he said, we stole all the cars, we put them on ships and sent them to Europe. Uh, they were resold there. Um, we were told to go to the banks and remove all the documents and all of the securities and the bonds and everything from the safety deposit boxes as well as all the gold and jewelry, anything right. of value. They cleaned that country absolutely clean and stole the wealth of that entire generation and murdered all of the white colonials there. And he said, and then... Uh, I went back to the Ukraine and, and, and the United Nations stood by while all this was while going it all happened. They were yes, they were told to stand down. This was yes. a Canadian general who was commanding there, and he he has yes. he had some very and, he was ordered to stand down. And I just want to make it clear that Michelle Shasadovsky, who is uh, a big name in alternative media, and he's from Ottawa, his father Evgeny Shasadovsky was from Rostov on Don. And they're a very, very special family because his father was one of the founders and the biggest movers and shakers behind the formation of the United Nations. Oh, Michel really? Shasadovsky is not a good guy, and I have been shafted by him everywhere I've been. War Crime Tribunal in Malaysia, I was going to testify on depleted uranium used in Iraq and Palestine. And he absolutely shafted me. He's a yeah. very, very dangerous person. And um, I think people should know that because these people are so clever in the UN. They make you think they're helping you. And right, what they've right. just gotten through doing is genociding everyone in your country. Yeah. They're very, very clever. So, um, so anyway, the Rwanda massacres and the looting of and murder of all of the uh, the white people is a really good example of these frequencies and how powerful they are and how they will use them in the future they're going to loot the united states they're going to loot all those countries in europe and there's going to be a theater of tension already between the muslims and the christians that will cover uh, these slaughters and the looting of all the wealth of these countries. And the U.S. they're setting up the the race war, the blacks against yes. the whites, uh, uh, yes. or the Hispanics against uh, each other. Men That's against women, lesbians against straights. Right. Um, that whole phony um, uh, homosexual. Um, I'm not opposed to homosexuals at all, but. I'm talking about the the politicized ones who it's not about sexuality at all, and a no, lot no, of the them. The gay agenda is very dangerous. Yeah, very very dangerous. It's very very very, very, very dangerous. Yeah, the the yeah. University of California is actively sending retired professors who have turned gay just to go to China and recruit Chinese gays, and they're bringing them over here by the boatload. But what going back to these technologies and how powerful they are. What I've seen now is since Janet Napolitano arrived two years ago in Berkeley, all of a sudden these light poles went up with flat array antennas on them. They're very powerful. They're linked up to the smart meters, to the cell phones, to um, the antennas, the antenna networks, and the students are being trained to use their cell phones to communicate with the light poles. This happened to me. I was attacked by my next door neighbor who's running an oracle operation next door uh, to attack me with all these frequencies. And 
she i i spotted her i was walking down the sidewalk in berkeley in an area i never go to and she was standing there with a, another male student and she's talking to him and pointing to me and she didn't want me to recognize her so she moved and hid behind a car so he's standing under the light post and he's got a cell phone in his hand and he's watching me and as i approached he pushed the buttons on his cell phone and I started getting blasted from the overhead street light. And every street light I passed for four more blocks until I got to the bench for the at the bus stop, every street light attacked me and I was crippled by the time I got to the bench and sat down. It took eight hours to get that frequency network off of me. It was horrible. And um, now I've seen the students coming up with their cell phones. These are students who've attacked me in the neighborhood. And they were hooking, they were programming their cell phones to the smart meter on my house and other houses. They just walk up and do it. And they can attack anyone through the cell phones and the smart meters. And they have also put the internet through the sewers here. So they can attack you through the drains and the faucets in your house. And they transmit mood frequencies. They transmit all kinds of mind control frequencies through your own sewer system. And these students now are hooked up to the smart meters on people's houses. They don't even know. They're hooked up to the, the lights overhead. They're hooked up to central headquarters on the campus. They are set up in apartment buildings where they are trained and groomed uh, to do all of this. And this is just the Occupy movement. It's the color revolution that's coming to every city in America and potentially every city in the world. And it's the young people. They have hijacked our children, our adult children. They're not our children anymore and they will turn them against their own parents, their own families, and their own co-workers. It reminds me of the words of Jesus, you know, that uh, the, the, the children were to turn against the parents and yes. the, the husband against the wife and all that. Yes, yes. certainly those uh, things are. So yes. people, what you're saying may sound strange to some listeners, but uh, I would oh. definitely have to concur with you that what, what we have, what has been built already is an electronic gulag. It's an you know, uh, electronic gulag, exactly right. And there is a, an excellent movie that I would recommend in the past. I would do so again. It's called Control Factor. It's uh, You can watch it on YouTube. And you will find it fascinating as to what they revealed in that movie, how these technologies work, how they go in and they tap into people's emotions yes. and control them, and how the cell phone tower. This is back in 2003. This movie came out, uh, uh, Loren, and they already discussed about how the, the network of cell towers had all been used yes. and built for this very purpose. So, yes, yes these things are and, not strange at all. They are absolutely yes. going on. There's another one by Adam Sandler called Remote Control. Okay, I think I saw that, but I didn't really... I should watch yeah. that again. I, uh, it's so all... These, Hollywood is set up uh, to foreshadow a lot of things right, and, and policies right. and, and so forth that are that are coming in the future. And Especially we, the technologies, they show you the future technologies which yes. uh, are going to be here sooner than we think. And, and um, for our betterment. In the springtime, maybe in May, I started noticing these movie posters all over the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, in the, the subway, on the, the main streets in San Francisco, everywhere. And um, also there were um, also posters uh, with a suicide number hotline uh, for people to call if they were considering suicide came with this movie. And this movie is a Pixar Walt Disney film about, um, it's a cartoon sort of thing, animated, but it's about moods. And this, oh, really? is, this is about the, the mood control that they're doing. And as soon as that movie started playing, wham, all that stuff came out with Jade Helm. People are committing suicide. They're, um, 
they're having uh, all these uh, uh, outbursts in public, uh, mood control, or people road, really... Road rage, everything. Yes, I road rage. Right. And it's to completely disrupt civil society. I, I remember, do you recall that story out of Japan where, uh, I don't know, it was kids' uh, movies or a kids' TV show that was... I don't know what they was doing exactly, maybe turning these kids into psychos or they were made into Great Depression. Something was happening because of a TV program that was on television. Yes, this, I read. The story came out a few yes. years ago. And there's also, uh, Japan has three mind control bases in Antarctica. This is where the field lines for the Earth's magnetic field come out and they go back mm. in, into the Earth at the North Pole. And um, the third one was turned on um, and I found it on the um, Nikon website. They most of these corporations have uh, military laboratories and and um, research also that they do and they're funded for. And this um, Nikon website was so proud of their new base in Antarctica called Pansy. And pansy, of course, it explains is a beautiful little flower. And, um, but the French meaning of, of pansy comes from the French word pensée, which means to think or, think, yeah. or thoughts. And right. um, this was... A, this, yes, and this was the third uh, Japanese base in Antarctica. And it was turned on on June the 19th, uh, following the Fukushima disaster in 2011. And look what's happening in Japan. Nobody's talking about Fukushima. They're eating all the contaminated food without complaining. Hillary Clinton made agreements with Japan that we would continue importing Japanese food and fish and so forth, and cars. and. Um, you, you wonder, how in the world does Japan keep going? How can their economy, like the American co economy, when the, there aren't any jobs, how can they, they maintain their, their high level of, of uh, economic well, wellness? And um, this uh, taxi driver told me, oh, he said the Honda cars that are coming to the United States from Japan have had the new motors removed and engines packed with heroin are put into those new cars and the new engines are shipped separately. When these cars reach the port of Oakland or other ports in the United States, those engines with the heroin in them are removed and the new motor put back into the car and then it's delivered to the car dealer. So. Um, it's this global drug racket that is actually the cash flow through um, nations all over the world, and the politicians are involved in it. Uh, the the police royal are involved in it. The, the military is involved yes, in the it. The royal yeah. families are all involved in it, and um, uh, Queen Beatrice of of the Netherlands, her lawyer was also the lawyer of the biggest drug dealer in the Netherlands. Maybe the Queen Beatrice and the biggest drug dealer are kinsfolk. <laughs> well, don't that you... That would be surprising, you, right? Queen Elizabeth, too. They're all involved yeah, yeah. in it. And and they have to be involved in it to to make them complicit to well, these well, programs. I, I mean, their involvement goes back to the Opium Wars and even probably before that, uh, Hong Kong and Shanghai Bank, HC, HSBC, was set up as a drug bank to begin with and their tradition continues to this day. Well, right? my family, my last name, Moray, is for the Moorish people or the people from the Middle East that the Crusaders brought back to Europe when right. during the Crusades. And they brought them back to Europe because Europe had no banking system, they had no hospitals, they had no fire departments, they had a lot they had they didn't have a lot of things that they had in the Middle East. Right. And so these Morays set up the whole entire banking system in Europe. They set up hospitals and, and fire departments that they'd never had before. And um these these morays, I, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, oh, yes, uh, the French king 
in maybe the 1400s or 1500s owed so much money to the Knights Templars because they had bigger armies than any king in right, Europe. Right, right. They were the bankers of Europe. They yes. were the bankers of Europe, and so the royal families, the royalty had to borrow the money from them. And he said, I can't ever pay this back to the Knights Templars, but their bank is in downtown Paris, and I have an army. I'll just go to that bank and take all their gold and money. So he went down with his army, and the bank was empty. <laughs> the, the Knights Templars had taken everything and disappeared in their navy fleet, and no king anywhere knew where they were. So, um, the, um, so then that king said to every king in Europe, he said, burn all the Knights Templars and right. the Morays at the stake. Well, not a single king would do that, because the Knights Templars put them on their thrones and kept them on their thrones. And that's still true today. And the only country that would give uh, the Knights Templars and the Morays um, amnesty Refuge. was Switzerland. And that's mm. why my family emigrated in 1865 to the United States. Well, from, that's why they have the Templar cross on their uh, yes. flag and all that. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. And Switzerland was started in the... Switzerland's a very sneaky country. Very, very sneaky. Yes. They, 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 all the NGOs come out of there. They, yes. They, even like the soccer, FIFA is headquartered yes. there. And it's, and it's, it's because... Yeah, they control a lot. They control a lot. Banking gold, Hitler's money, everything, yeah. And it's because the uh, Swiss formed the um, the banking system. It was actually the Knights Templars who right. created yeah. the banking system in Switzerland so that the Knights Templars and people coming back from the Crusades could hide their money there. Right, yeah. Loren, uh, regrettably, we're running a little short on time here, so... Uh Thank you. This has been very interesting as always, and uh, we could probably talk for a few more hours. But uh, <laughs> uh, before I go, why don't you go ahead and share your website information and your contact information and uh, anything else you'd like to share about yourself? Well, I'd just like to thank you for having this opportunity to, do, to be on your program. You're a wonderful host, and um, it's great to talk to you. I learn as much. And um, our our website is info, and it's spelled L-E-U-R-E-N-M-O-R-E-T dot info. Uh, you can also go on the website and on almost every web page there's a place to leave your, um, your email so that we can put you on our alert list so that when uh, news comes out or a new interview or whatever, we send that out. Uh, people really like it, and we have lost very, very few people uh, because it wasn't, for whatever reason, people like it. They like this information. It's very empowering, actually. And then uh, we're going to also have a store. Uh, we're setting that up now. And... Um, uh, I just like to thank you one more time, Paul, and um, I do really appreciate who you are and what you are and your intelligence and your worldview um, and your deep understanding of many things that I'm talking about. This is not something you learn in a university or college. You, you learn it through uh, knowing people, through traveling, through really communicating with uh, people who are in the know and with sharing knowledge. And each time that uh, we do an interview, I learn a lot from you. So you're making my life rich, too. Thank you. Well, th thank you, Loren. And likewise, you know, it's, it's always a pleasure to uh, speak with you personally and also when we do our interviews. And uh, you are real, truly a wealth of information. And I would also vouch that your website is, is uh, really... Uh, a treasure trove and I would highly recommend all listeners you know should go there frequently because you updated a lot and you put a lot of information which really is not found anywhere else and for that I thank you for all the labor that you and Larry you know put yourself into to bring us this information so yes I wish you all the best and uh, well 
next time let's not wait so long to do another program yeah. let's try and get one in sooner thank rather you than, rather than later thank you very much thanks Lauren have a great day bye Larry thank you Paul 